Throughout its life, a star generates new elements by fusing atoms together in its core. Now, what's fuse mean? Stick together? Sure. Now, m stars are mostly made of hydrogen and helium. This represents a proton. Okay? The number of protons in an atom determines what kind of an element it is. So a hydrogen atom contains one proton in its nucleus. So how many hydrogen atoms does this represent? One. one. Sure, one. Now, did everybody wash your hands? Yes. OK, good. Um, I, want to sh I want you to take two marshmallows representing the nucleus of two hydrogen atoms. OK, now don't eat the hydrogen, OK? <laughs> Generally, fusion happens with two atomic nuclei at a time. Okay. So what element has two protons in its core? A helium. A helium, sure. Well, let's see how a star makes helium. We'll pretend your hands are the core of a star. Temperatures are so hot and pressures are so great inside the star's core that the atoms are moving tremendously fast and crashing into one another. And sometimes they fuse. Can you make your protons fuse? Let's say the magic words, nuclear fusion. Okay, our two hydrogen atoms, very good, have fused to form helium. Very good. Now, nuclear fusion doesn't just generate new, heavier elements. Each time two atoms lighter than iron fuse, energy is released in the form of gamma ray radiation. Gamma ray radiation. We're using this piece of macaroni to represent gamma ray radiation. Now, let's make another helium atom. Good, okay, one more helium atom and more energy. Good, one more. Okay, now we have three helium atoms. How many protons are here all together? Six. Six, sure. Now let's smash these two heliums together. Here we go, back into the core of the star, magic words. Nuclear, nuclear fusion. fusion! And let's smash the other helium into this one, and nuclear fusion! And we have an atomic nucleus with how many protons? Six. Six, Six right. Now what element is that? Carbon. Carbon, right. Yes, living things, like you and me, have carbon in them. Now, hydrogen atoms fuse to make helium, helium to carbon, and then on to oxygen, and so on. So the core of the star ends up filled up with a variety of elements, releasing energy every time. This process powers the stars, including our star, the Sun. If we're inside a massive star, more than eight to ten times the mass of our Sun, Nuclear fusion continues until it reaches iron. Now, how many protons are in iron? 26. 26. Would we need a lot of marshmallows? Yeah. Yeah. Well, iron is the end of the line for fusion. So, when the core reaches iron, it no longer generates heat. And so it starts to cool down. Then what happens? The core collapses under its own weight, followed by a supernova explosion. So what else is generated in the explosion? The intense shock wave from the supernova explosion accelerates some of the material blown out of the star and the material surrounding the star to speeds close to the speed of light. These, these fast-moving atomic particles are called cosmic rays. Now we can see a supernova, so it also releases the longer wavelengths of visible light. Now once the shock wave from the supernova explosion slams into the blown off outer layers of the star, X-rays are generated. Now that's how supernova generate cosmic radiation.